Now, because I come from a, a psychological background, one thing we look at in, is the similarities between counseling and coaching. And um, both establish supportive, respectful relationships that are free of manipulation, that are confidential. In counseling, you can also work on goal setting. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, for recording purposes. All right. Okay, I totally forgot about this. Okay, so, um, and then in terms of psychological theory, uh, coaching echoes aspects of behaviorism, social learning theory, and also cognitive theory, and that's where clients are made aware of how they are changing their behavior. The difference is, is that um, in traditional coaching, coaches do not explore serious emotional, cognitive, or behavioral problems of clinical intensity. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, that line in a little bit.
And this slide just shows the participant demographics. I don't have a um, legend up there, so I'm just going to kind of explain briefly what each of these things mean so you can get a better picture of who we're working with. Um, one is female, and two is male. So as you can see, the majority were female. In terms of age, it's, it's up there, so I don't need to explain that one. Ethnicity, we have um, Caucasian and non-Caucasian. So you can see also the majority of clients were Caucasian. School age um, is one would be high school. As you can see, we actually had a high school senior um, in the study. And then uh, two is college. And then three is graduate school. Um, so we had some grad students as well. So it was kind of a span. Um, and you can even see that we had one who was age 49, which gave us some valuable information about working with older clients. Older than college time. Old. <laughs> All right. Um, and then diagnosis. Um, one is ADHD only. Two is they had a comorbid learning disability. And three is they had a disorder, another disorder, comorbidity. Um, in that case, it was actually um, a diagnosis of bipolar. And then we have one being currently on medication, two currently not on medication. And then regardless of whether the client was or was not on medication when they started, we had them uh, stay with their, their same regimen throughout the process so that it wouldn't confound the results. Um, we have one currently in counseling, two not in counseling, and then three of... Uh, the type, I'm sorry, one was predominantly inattentive, two predominantly hyperactive, as you can see we didn't have any of those, three was combined, and four was that we didn't know even after asking for background information, you know, they said I had this diagnosis somewhere, I don't know where the paperwork is, which happens, and also all of the participants, even though we have up here what type they were, none of them could tell me what they had which is, is kind of shocking, and we need to do something about that. I had to actually go through their reports and find out myself. All right, so who's with me? <laughs> All right. Okay, so the intervention. Um, as I mentioned before, this was an eight-week coaching intervention. Um, it was based on a model developed in that earlier case study that I mentioned at the Adult Learning Evaluation Center down at FSU. And according to the model, these are the stages that, that coaching occurs in. Before the intake session, we give the clients um, some measures to fill out and some background information. Um, so they fill that all out. We talk to them a little bit about the process, what they're getting into. And then at the intake session, we go through that paperwork with the client, um, get a better idea of their goals, and then hopefully by the end of the first session, we've developed those long-term goals for the client. And then the middle sessions just involve taking those long-term goals and using weekly objective worksheets. We actually break down those long-term goals into smaller objectives, small steps to help them attain those long-term goals. And then for each weekly objective, we set a reward and we set a consequence for that client. And um, those are to help motivate and, and get the client through the process. And then the final session, we talk about what did they get out of it? Did they meet their long-term goals? Did they not meet their long-term goals? Did they experience change? All those questions that we want to answer about the coaching process. What, what did they like? What did they not like? Um, and then throughout the whole process, we're taking notes and actually um, transcripts. So we had transcripts analyzed uh, every word of every single coaching session to get a really uh, wealth of information. So these are the instrumentation used in the... Yeah. yeah with the model that the, 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 uh, you used in the LEC, was that specifically designed for folks with ADHD or was that just a general model in terms of how you Well, both. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it was it was designed for people with with ADHD, but um, and I can talk a little bit more about this later. But it can be effective with with people with different types of functioning deficits. 